again everybody today what I want to talk about is how Java programming works and some of the basics uh, by this point a lot of you have installed the compiler and, and the Java virtual machine and the integrated development in integrated development environment and those are all great but I want you to understand how all three of those work together and how they are used to create code so one of the first pieces of code that we're going to work with is this interest program so this is what we call source code and there's some intricacies and some nuances to this code that we'll get into a little bit later on in the course but I want to just talk about a few of the aspects right now just to clarify so the first thing is that you'll notice that it's called a package to start and the package is called interest. Below it is a, a slash with a star, then some more stars and another slash. This whole piece of information is what's called a block comment. Commenting your code is a good practice and I'm going to expect it of you as especially as you get further and further on in the course, the, the code that you're going to be writing is going to get more and more complicated. And so providing comments helps to clarify what each section of your code does. It helps clarify it for me and it also helps clarify it for you. As you go on in the course and you start to start to create really good programs, you're probably going to want to reuse bits and pieces of them. And if you go back and look in your programs, you're going to want to be able to quickly find sections of code and know exactly what they do. So block, block comments are a great way to do that. So here all I've said is that this was created by me. Uh, here's the date that I created it and it calculates interest. If we come down a little bit further, we see this public class main. Every, every program has to have a, a main method to it. Okay, uh, so public static void main is the main method for this for this program and we'll talk more about methods a little bit later on again it's not something to be concerned with every every piece of code that you're going to write to start will probably have this statement at the start of it and then some opening brackets these opening brackets mean that below these brackets is where you start to see the code so first thing i do is i create i initialize two integer values this is what this int stands for i'm going to create one called principal and one called time you can think of, of, of these variables as these values as, as like boxes. You can put information into the box to be stored there. I'm also going to create two doubles. Doubles are numbers that have extra digits in them. Uh, so digits behind the decimal place. So for interest rate, I'm going to need decimal places. And then for the interest that's calculated, I'm also going to need decimal places. I initialize the principal amount to be 500. So what I'm saying is the, the investment that I'm making is $500. I'm going to set the interest rate at 9% and I'm going to set the time to two years. And what this program does is it takes those values, the principal, the rate, and the time, it multiplies them together and takes the result of that and places it in interest, that holding spot for interest. The final thing that this program does is it uses system.out.println, something we'll talk about a little bit later on in the course as well to send a statement out to the screen. And the statement is the interest earned is, so that's a string of letters that will appear on the screen. And then it adds on this interest value that we calculated. So essentially what this whole program does is it takes in some information and tells you how much interest you can expect from an investment. So what's really happening here? Your source code is written in a language that you can understand. Right now it may seem cryptic and it may not seem to make much sense, but as you move through unit number two, hopefully more and more aspects of that code will, will begin to make sense. And so that's what we call source code. It's, it's the human level of, of programming, okay? What happens next is it gets sent to your, your compiler. So if you're gonna run your program, it needs to be sent to your compiler. And this is something you would have installed as part of your, your setup. And the compiler takes that, that code and then turns it into what's called bytecode. And so it creates a file called interest.class. The source code was in a file called interest.java. Now, most likely when you do this transformation, this translation, uh, you're doing it inside the integrated development environment. And that's sort of the power of the integrated development environment. That's one of the aspects of it that's powerful is that it can, it can do this for you. The other, the other aspect of, of doing things within the integrated development environment is that you get suggestions right on the spot for code and corrections. And if there are any issues when it goes to compile, it lets you know what those issues are and how to go about fixing them. There's also some sort of advanced methods of, of unit testing that we'll go through later on in the course uh, to really help you kind of figure out when things go wrong in your code and, and how to fix them. 
So the final product here from the compiler is what's called bytecode. Again, it's in your interest.class file, and that's going to be sent to the computer. So Java bytecode can be read by a Java chip. Now, most people don't have a Java chip in their computer. Okay. You likely have a different chip or a different processor that's built into your computer. Now, if you had a special computer that had a Java chip on it, it could interpret your Java bytecode. But one of the power, powerful things about Java is that it wasn't designed to run only on Java machines. It was designed to run sort of universally. And so in order to make that happen, there's one additional thing that's added on to make this whole process work. And that's what we call the Java Virtual Machine. So what the Java Virtual Machine does is it takes your Java bytecode and it passes it to what's called a Java Interpreter. And what this interpreter does is it takes that bytecode and makes sense of it for the actual processor on your on your computer. So like I said, every computer is going to have its own processor. It's going to understand its own code. Okay, It's not going to understand the code for other computers. It's not going to understand the Java bytecode that you created. But the Java interpreter can make sense of it for the actual processor. So the actual processor can run your program. This whole package of the interpreter and the actual processor is what we call the Java Virtual Machine. So here's an analogy to help you maybe understand it a little bit better. Maybe you've seen meetings at the United Nations before. Leaders from around the world will come and speak. Okay. In this instance, I'm going to use Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin is going to do a, a speech. So what he would do is he would write out exactly what it is he wants to say. Now on that piece of paper, he might have scribbles and highlighter, maybe notes on the side and the margins. It would be a lot of information that most of us couldn't read and understand. What does he do once he's ready to deliver his presentation? He reads and interprets the things that he's written down, like a compiler would, and he delivers it orally to the audience. Now the audience, these leaders from around the world, they don't understand Russian. So what needs to happen is there needs to be an interpreter. This is kind of like our Java virtual machine. Okay, The interpreter listens to the information that's being delivered and sends it to the audience members in a way that they can understand. So the interpreter might be speaking to a microphone and translating on the spot, or might be typing into a computer and having it show up on their screen so that they can understand and follow the speech that's being given. This is very similar to what happens in a computer. So the source code is sent to the compiler. The compiler delivers that information to the Java virtual machine. The Java virtual machine takes that information and interprets it for the configuration of your computer. So if you have a Windows operating system and a Lenovo desktop, it needs to interpret for that. If, if you have a Mac and you're running iOS, then it needs to interpret for that. Or maybe you have a Linux, it needs to interpret for that. The beauty of this system is that Java bytecode can run on any computer as long as there's a Java virtual machine there. So it's not designed for any one processor or one operating system. It can be run universally, and that's the power of Java. That's why it has such wide acceptance.